Welcome back. Retail sales disappointed on Tuesday before the holiday, but our next guest says consumers are still driving economic growth. He says every income quintile except the lowest has more money now than they did pre-pandemic. They're just spending it differently. Joining me now is Matt Shea, president and CEO of the National Retail Federation. Busy, busy time for you, Matt. Thanks for making the time and joining us. Hi, Kelly. Nice to be with you today. So the, we've started to see economists say, listen, excess savings and, and the cushion, it's all starting to run out. Kind of they're worried about the months ahead. How would you analyze the situation? Well, I guess I'd step back for a minute. Uh, our forecast for this year was that retail sales would grow between two and a half and three percent. And when we made that forecast, we said very clearly that we expected moderation this year. Uh, we know that the pre-pandemic savings, that bump, uh, that great splurge and surge in spending we saw in 20, really beginning holiday of 20 through 21 and 22, that it wasn't sustainable. Uh, and at some point, we're going to sort of moderate and really revert to the mean. And so uh, the census numbers were uh, plus 0.1 percent. Our numbers, which are X gas, X auto, uh, our view on census is it's really a little higher. It's plus 3 percent month mm -hmm. over month. And the, you know, the NRF CNBC monitor that your colleague Steve Leesman talks about every right. month, that's, that's quite a bit higher than that. And we suspect that census will revise up the, the main numbers as they frequently revise their numbers closer to where we were. But even at, even at point three for May, if you string together 12 of those, you're at three and a half percent growth on an annual basis. And that's where we were before the pandemic. And I think if you look at lots of indicators, whether it's debts, delinquencies, savings rates, uh, they're all sort of reverting to the mean, which is they're kind of back to pre-pandemic numbers, which I don't think is really a surprise that we were going to eventually have an economy that moderated and, and slowed down a bit. I want to ask you about tariffs, but before we go in that direction, just to put a point on this, we were just speaking with Mark Zandi. don't know if you caught that last segment, yeah, who said... I did, yeah. yeah. He said, listen, I think the consumer is strong, but that you need Fed rate cuts now to maintain that strength, and, you know, that without that... And you think people would welcome that, you know? And I, from where you sit, do you... Do you think that would largely be the case, or do you think inflation would, would still become a problem? Well, I, uh, I, I know Mark, and, and he's been to speak at our events and board and things, and I talked to him, and, and I think he's incredibly on point, and I agree with much of what he said. Um, I, I'm not sure. Maybe it would be the uh, Zandy Evans Shea, you know, person <laughs> in the street conversation. I'm not sure that consumers necessarily equate inflation with what the Fed does. I think they're True. aware of higher interest rates, you know, generally speaking, but they're aware of higher prices. And so when they go into pick a retail establishment and they see it costs more than it did not a year ago, but maybe five years ago, that's what they're aware of. And, and we know the behavioral economics theory of this, that you're more aware of, you know, current than so longer term trend in the retail space. A lot of retail categories over the course of last year, the GAFO, general apparel, footwear, other, that whole category of retail is flat to down. Yes. So when we see 3% growth, that's growth in, in, an, in a category that's actually flat. Sure. It's not services. It's not, you know, housing, rent, uh, energy. Um, so we all know prices are higher. But at the moment, especially for that lowest income quintile, their wages are going 4 or 5%, which is higher than any other income quintile. Mm -hmm. So even though they've got more spending power, it doesn't feel that way because they see higher prices, and, and none of us like it. Yeah, no, the e-commerce numbers were down, you know, 5%, 10% on a two-year basis. So uh, I take your point. Okay, let me ask you about tariffs then. The president, uh, former President, possibly future President Trump, the other day floated the idea of replacing the income tax system with a tariff system. Now, my understanding is that it's importers who pay the tariff. I think immediately of the retail industry, there's a lot of imports. That would t potentially be a, lo a lot of tariff to pay and maybe pass along to consumer. Just talk to me a little bit about how that might have worked in the past, how it might work in the future. Yeah, well, I mean, once upon a time, and we go back to Smoot Hawley in the 1930s that, that put very high tariffs and very protectionist policies in place and how damaging that was to the economy, to the average working family, uh, how it, it further accelerated the depression. Uh, there's a reason we moved away from a system of tariffs through the 19th century and got into an income tax system. It's more predictable. It can be addressed in a way that's more progressive as our income tax is. So even if you're looking at tariffs as a way to generate revenue, it's extraordinarily regressive. It hurts lowest income families more than any other income quintile. So there's that dimension. And a number of studies have been done that to raise enough money to replace income taxes, you'd have to put tariffs of 
75, 85, 90 percent on everything imported into the country. Right, so absolutely. leave aside a blanket 10 percent or even 60 on China. That would be on everything that we import. So on the revenue side, there's that piece. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, this is like trying to outrun your shadow. A tariff is a tax, period, end of story. There are no alternative facts here. You can't outrun that. Uh, whether it's the Biden bonanza or the Trump taxes, I don't think any administration wants to be saddled with that. It's bad for consumers. It's bad for working families and voters. This might be